That's me, Susan Boyce, back when I was part of the song and dance team. My partner and I traveled, met people, and had a great time. After we retired the act, I missed all that excitement. So, I bought myself an Airstream travel trailer and hit the road. Hey, want to join me for my first big adventure? I was born and raised in New England, and I love it here. But in wintertime, well, it just isn't as fun as it used to be when I was a kid. Now that I've grown up a bit, winter seems like the perfect time to hit the road in search of warm weather and adventure. I make it all the way to Virginia on my first day of travel. Early the next morning, I say hello to an old friend and continue on my way. Crossing into South Carolina, I notice the temperature is climbing, and so are my spirits. After a quick lunch and some souvenir shopping, I'm back on the road. Finally, on my third day of driving, I reach sunny Florida. I'm looking forward to a good night's rest before starting to explore the many attractions this state has to offer. Florida has some of the loveliest state and national parks in the country. These parks provide safe haven for vanishing wildlife, an oasis of relaxation for weary travelers, and a place where visitors can observe the natural harmony between the creatures that call this place home and their environment. We're in Corishan State Park in Estero, Florida, and it is beautiful here. Sam was here, 112504. I wonder where Sam is now. I feel so far away from civilization right now. I'm not, but it is so wild and beautiful here. The Estero River runs along the border of the park, all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. There's plenty of wildlife along the river. These juvenile ibis don't seem to have a care in the world, but learning to hunt for their own food and avoiding danger are vital skills. It's rare to have an alligator turn up on the banks of the Estero River this close to the park, but it does happen. This handsome fellow is called the Little Blue Heron. He's a stealthy hunter. These remarkable creatures remind me how lucky I am to be able to stay right here in this park. This gopher tortoise and I have something in common. Just like me, he carries his home along with him. But while I keep my eye on the gas gauge, Mr. Tortoise finds enough fuel to stay mobile almost anywhere along the way. This sandhill crane is probing for seeds, grains, or small animals. Luckily for me, he's too busy snacking to be camera shy. This great horned owl seems to be keeping an especially sharp eye on her surroundings. A little investigation shows me why. Two darling babies. My first week flies by. In the morning, it will be time to start heading for the Florida Everglades and more adventure. Our journey continues with a trip to the Everglades and one of Florida's most popular beaches. Join us for more freewheeling.
I know something is different the moment I wake up. A rare cold front has moved through Florida during the night, and frost is threatening the citrus crop. The full moon is setting, creatures are stirring, and Monument Lake here in Big Cypress National Preserve is putting on quite a show. I chose this spot because it's halfway between my last stop and my next destination, Everglades National Park. Now it's time to get moving. I say goodbye to the park ranger and hit the road. The Florida Everglades are world famous. I'm really looking forward to seeing some wildlife up close. In the late 1800s, a pound of the great blue heron's feathers was selling for twice the price of gold. The birds were hunted to near extinction but thanks to conservation, they're making a great comeback. This female Anhinga has one driving concern, providing for the next generation. Her babies make sure that mama knows they're hungry. This wood stork uses his feet to prod the bottom of a stream, hoping to flush out a tasty treat. He's rewarded for his patience with a dinner of fresh fish. Looks like some of his neighbors are getting a little jealous. This white ibis would be happy with a crayfish or perhaps a frog. But some creatures have larger appetites. Alligators aren't fussy eaters. Turtles, snakes, raccoons, deer, even other alligators can wind up on their menu. They're powerful swimmers and can run up to 30 miles an hour. When you're in the Everglades, be sure that you keep a nice, big space between you and the alligators. Not every animal out here could be described as lovely or well-mannered. Yet glamorous or gruesome, each creature has an important role to play in the natural cycle of life. They may not win our affection, but they deserve our respect. My day in the Everglades ends with a picture-perfect sunset. But the weather down here can change without warning. The National Weather Service in Miami has issued a severe thunderstorm warning. These storms have the capability of producing wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour along with small hail. Very heavy rainfall of 1 to 2 inches per hour and frequent lightning. I'm staying on Okeechobee Island, just outside of Everglades City, when the storm hits. Fortunately, it's safe and dry inside my travel trailer, so I'm not worried at all. This flock of white pelicans announces the start of a new day. It's time for me to move on. I've enjoyed seeing the wild side of Florida, the birds, reptiles, flora and fauna that make this state unique. But now I've got the urge to spend some time with the people who come here for nothing more than sun and fun. I check my map and start driving toward one of the most popular destinations for snowbirds and spring breakers. Fort Myers Beach is a great place to relax, go for a swim, take a walk, or ride your bike. One of the great things about Fort Myers Beach is, well, you never know who's gonna drop in for the party. This aerial daredevil is Chad, who calls himself the Barefoot Psychotic Skydiver. And this is his 777th skydive. He's greeted by a flock of well-wishers. Chad's proud of what he's just done and loves the place that he calls home. Fort Myers Beach Rock! It certainly does. And when the sun sets, things really start cooking. I head downtown to check out the scene. No. 
Michelle is an artist from France who spends her winters here entertaining the young and young at heart. I want to stay up all night and talk to people, but I know I've got to get an early start. So it's back to the lovely spot I'm staying at, right on the beach. Early the next morning, I'm heading east to Fort Lauderdale to rendezvous with other Airstream owners. I'm looking forward to more excitement and adventure. Come along for an amazing Airstream rally and a visit to colorful Key West, Florida, next on Freewheeling. I start my day halfway to my destination, camped on the shores of Lake Okeechobee. I'm amazed by the sheer size of this huge freshwater lake. It's like I've landed on the shore of some inland sea. I briefly consider going for a morning swim, but some of the local residents are already on the prowl, so I just enjoy my breakfast on shore. The town of Pahokee is nestled on the southeastern rim of Lake Okeechobee. Like so many other places in Florida, this area has seen its share of damage from a relentless series of hurricanes. Throughout Florida, buildings have been destroyed, dreams have been shattered, and lives changed forever. But the citizens of this state are proud and strong, and people are ready to face the future. I'd like to stay, but the Airstream rally begins tomorrow, so I set a course straight for Fort Lauderdale. For months, the weather has been sunny and warm. It could be too much of a good thing. Along the way, I see a reminder of what a drought can mean down here. This brush fire is out of control and headed in my direction. It's time to move on and pray for rain. My first task after arriving at the shopping mall in Fort Lauderdale, where the rally begins, is to make sure I have some shade. Now it's time to sign in. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Tom sent me over here. He said, this is where I register. That's right. Uh, Everything, um, Once I've signed up, I'm ready to meet my neighbors. Right. My name is Susan. My name's Benita. Benita. So I'm going to tape this big monster that came in part by you. <laughs> what year is this? It's an 87. It's an 87. Mm -hmm. Now this is space. You have lots yeah. of space. Wow. There is, there is a big difference. And a toaster. I don't have yeah. a toaster yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new to this. This First is, uh, one we got wouldn't pop up. So we we like living in it. Uh -huh. Do you live in it all the time? No. No? no. Just, just for trips? Just for yeah. trips. Bonita and her husband have one of the original Airstream motorhomes. They're retired and have been traveling across America for years. You'll be fine. Well, take a rest and I'll see you later. But On the other side of my space is Diane, a much younger vagabond with a much smaller Airstream travel trailer. She's also willing to show me her digs. <gasps> now so that's a good light, yeah. Isn't that great? That's excellent. Yeah, there's one at the front too. Actually, it's a nice soft light. I've got good reading light, but I don't have a nice atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to design yeah, this thing something. Is terrible. Yeah. I didn't even use it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just too harsh. Wow, thank you. See ya. We've gathered together from all over the country. Our common denominator? a love for these shiny mobile homes known as Airstream trailers. In the morning, we'll all be heading to the Florida Keys, but right now it's time to get some shut-eye. After a communal breakfast and some departure instructions, I get a private performance from Tom, an Airstream veteran. Tom, his wife, and dogs have been to just about every rally in the last 30 years. He's got quite a collection of harmonicas and plays with the energy and heart of a self-taught musician. At 9 o'clock sharp, the exodus begins. 
50 Airstreams will be leaving for the Florida Keys in three waves. Organizers have broken up the departure to make sure we don't tie up traffic on U.S. Highway 1, the road to the Keys. The Wally Byam Caravan Club is the organization of Airstream owners that sponsored this event. They're hardworking, dedicated, and in love with the idea of being able to take your home with you when you travel. According to folklore, Wally Byam's wife refused to go camping without a kitchen, so he designed a travel trailer that was beautiful, practical, and rolled down the highway like a stream of air. For 70 years, folks hauling these aluminum land yachts have been ambassadors of goodwill across this nation and around the world. It's a thrill for me to be part of that tradition. After a couple of hours on the road, I arrive at Big Pine Key. This will be our base camp for the next few days. The weather is sunny, breezy, and warm. I'm looking forward to exploring my new surroundings. Bahia Honda State Park is just across the bridge from where I'm staying. It's a great place for hiking, swimming, or snorkeling. The current is pretty strong today, so like these smaller fish, I stick close to shore. After my swim, I pump up my inflatable boat and head back to the marina where I've parked my truck. I'm hoping to meet some special friends right around sunset, and I don't want to be late. After a quick but refreshing shower, I head off to nearby Deer Key, a place that really lives up to its name. An endangered species, the Florida key deer is the smallest race of North American deer. Adults are less than three feet tall at the shoulder. These cute little critters were nearly hunted to extinction in the 1950s. The current population is estimated at about 300, and they're protected by law. As evening shadows grow longer, I slip out of my truck for a closer look. This group seems more curious than frightened by me. After a good night's sleep, I'm ready to continue to the very end of U.S. Highway 1. It's the most popular destination out here. This is Key West, and it's got everything. Food, fun, and plenty of sun. I consider ordering the grilled alligator appetizer, but choose some delicious fried grouper instead. If you're headed this way, make sure you enjoy being with people. Lots of people. Key West is a mecca for fun-loving tourists who flock here in the winter. Speaking of flocks, there are hundreds of wild chickens that roam the island, adding something special to its charm. It's a funky town, all right, but I discover there are some traditional values. We sit away again in Margaret. Oh, Hill. don't you know something older than that? Well, you're in Key West. You're <laughs> supposed to sing Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> right? Yeah. You'll see folks from around the world enjoying the sights down here. And even a few locals. After a few hours of playing tourist, there are just three things that I want. Shade and music. Key lime pie. There's a traditional celebration at sunset on Key West that has a well-earned reputation for being wild and wacky. But my trip is drawing to a close, so I find a quiet spot to collect my thoughts and plan my next move. Don't go away. We've saved the best for last. Freewheeling will continue in just a moment. The sun is setting on my expedition, a voyage that's taken me from the heart of New England to the far reaches of the Florida Keys. This adventure has revealed a colorful parade of creatures that I never expected to meet. And best of all, I've met them on their own terms in the place they call home. Then there's been the freedom of life on the open road. 
the chance to explore new places, or just kicking back and doing whatever I felt like doing. <laughs> Maybe it's been the people I've met along the way that have brought me the most joy. Their kindness and generosity. Their courage and love of life. They were willing to open their hearts, and by the time we parted company, we were no longer strangers. We were friends. I guess that's what makes saying goodbye so tough. And why I'm promising myself that my adventures are just beginning.